Hi, my name's Connor, and I will be showing you the basics of the lighting board. Before we learn about the equipment, there are a few things we should review first. The purpose of the lighting board is to provide depth in your scene. It sets the mood and emotion for your scene, as well as controls what the viewer can and cannot see. It is important because without control over your lighting, you could have a completely wrong look for your scene and make it difficult for the rest of the crew to do their jobs. As the lighting board operator, it is your responsibility for lighting the set the way the director wants. You also have to make sure all lighting equipment is returned, switched off, and maintained at the end of your shoot. The lights hang from the lighting grid above the set. The cables for controlling and powering the lights run through the walls and connect to the lighting grid. All lights attached to the grid are plugged into the power grid above the lighting grid. All the ports are labeled with the numbers that correspond with the channels on the lighting board. For example, 37 output connects to channel 37 on the lighting board. This is Jacob. He will be helping to show us the lighting board today. On the control surface, the faders are for more delicate changes in lights. The wheel can be used to quickly set up lights all at once or one at a time, and the keypad allows for precision lighting setup. The monitor displays all the lighting data, what channels are on and off, and what channels are currently selected, and the right monitor is touchscreen, allowing for easy interface with the lighting controls. To get started, you want to power everything up. You will want to turn the board on by pressing the power button on the top right corner. Then, raise the master dimmer fully up. Next, turn on the monitors by pressing their power buttons. To turn on the power for the lighting grid, you can flick the switches on the panel to the left of the lighting workstation by the doors. You can also turn on the house lights and bright lines from here as well. To control the lights with the dimmer wheel, you can select lights on the right screen by touching them, and after they are selected, you can move the wheel up to increase the amount of light coming from your selected lights, or move the wheel down to decrease the light. Once the number on the selected lights reaches FL, it is at 100% and is full, which means it can't go any higher because it's outputting the maximum amount of light. When the number is at zero, it's not putting out any light. Another useful way to adjust lights is the command codes. To use these, you will use the keypad on the board. Every light on the grid is numbered and can be set to a certain amount of light between the values of zero and 100. A basic command would look like 23 at 75 enter or 13 at full enter. Just make sure you enter the light number, then the at key, then your light value number, and then enter key. The delete key can clear parts of the command line if you enter something wrong. With three point lighting, you want to start with the key light to light the subject on the side. Next is the fill light, which is used to light from the other side of the key. It shouldn't be as strong as the key, just a little less intense. The last light is the backlight and is used to take away shadows cast it by the key in the fill light. We also have LED lights for the stage. The LEDs are used to set a more dynamic background, like a game show would have. A game show would have wacky, zany, strobing colors, while a news show would have straight and solid colors, like blue or green. First, to turn on the LEDs, go behind the stage and you'll find the power bar they are connected to and turn it on. On the right screen, the LEDs are located in channels 201 through 212. You'll have to press ML control to bring up the advanced functions for the LEDs. You can use that monitor to access the colors for LEDs and the way of illuminating themselves. There are many different settings for the LEDs and even presets at the bottom of the screen. The bright lines are important for lighting the green screen on our set. They are very bright and shouldn't be stared directly into for long. The bright lines are more heavy duty than other studio lights and they require warm up time. Make sure the switches are turned on by the power switches for the lighting grid and turn up channels 1 and 2 on the board to turn them on. Some things to remember are, all lights are labeled on the lighting grid. Look up and look for the number tag on the light if you're having troubles. If you use the dimmer faders, make sure you use the channel selector knob to select which layer of lights you are on. Do not forget to turn everything off the way you turned it on when leaving the studio for the day. 
The lighting board is a very useful and important piece of equipment. Be sure to practice on it to get a better feel of the controls and the lights. Thank you for watching.